Good morning, team. Uh, I am on vacation, but not on my motorcycle ride. Uh, that's because it's not happening this year. So what I decided to do with a couple days off is get underneath the car and install my new differential, which has been geared to 3.9. And that is because we are looking for forced induction here pretty soon. And first and second gear would just be unusable. Um, in that red bag over there is the hardware um, connection points for my Z1 aluminum under shroud. And I am nervous and frustrated that the mounting hardware is still in a bag, which means they probably use plastic pop rivets to hold that thing on. Uh, I had the folks that did the paint job on the car reinstall that panel when they were already tearing the front end apart and they agreed to do it and I just realized the bag they gave me with all the stuff back has all the fucking mounting hardware in it for the under shroud so who the fuck knows what we're going to find when we climb under there but that's disheartening so what we're going to do today is we're going to kind of step by step um, install this uh, the first step in the process is to take the breather hose and freeze it so I've got it in a cup of ice in the freezer and that is going to be this breather hose right here. It says no fluid, not sealed, which is great. That means I don't have to strip off any uh, RTV or silicone sealant. All right. Uh, these thing are, things are sealed on with the wrath of God. Ideally, what you want to do, I know there's no oil in here, but you want to take this fill plug out first to make sure it's not seized before you take the drain out down low. And that kind of goes for servicing too, because you want uh, you want to make sure that you can refill it before you empty it out. Otherwise, you'll have a bone dry differential and it's fucked. So I tried with the electric little impact. That's not doing it. Uh, nothing's working. So we're gonna try something really stupid. We're gonna go with the pneumatic impact. I highly, highly recommend you never, ever, ever fucking do this. because these are really soft metals and this might just suck big pee pee. So we're gonna put this guy in reverse and we're gonna try this thing out. Hopefully it moves now. Let's see if I can lock that in there. Ta-da! That was insane. Let's see if I can get this drill into the bottom one. Pops right out. Look at that. There's the drain, magnetic, nothing on it. Super clean. This has never been used. There's your fill plug. And what's interesting, oh, I guess there is a washer on there. I was like, I don't think they put a fucking gasket on there. They did, it's right there. So that means your boy's gonna have to find one Man, they tightened the fuck out of that thing. Well, I hope I didn't strip anything. Uh, so yeah, that took quite a bit longer than it should have. So uh, I'm gonna get back to these bolts now. See if I can get this case off of here. Hard to do with no bench. We did it off. We finally got it off there, Jesus Christ. And uh, there's no fucking way we used uh, pneumatic uh, impact. We'll just uh, slide that. Don't ever fucking do that. So here, here it is. Uh, this is our new Z1 mechanical differential. We can see that there's still paint right here on these, these uh, teeth. And that is to check the clearance. And it does look like it's riding just a skosh on the inside but there's probably enough backspacing or play in there where it's not gonna be the end of the world, but all this should be shimmed and ready to go. Mounting surface, they actually did a great job. There's still oil on it. I'm actually impressed. Those uh, bolts were fucking nutty. So here's what I did. I, I know, I don't know, I'm fairly confident that a couple of these bolts toward the bottom of this might be just a skosh longer, and that's because um, 
Well, actually, no, those, those are uniform. The diff brace that I have that I'm gonna put on around this has longer bolts on the bottom. Regardless, just in case, I know these aren't timed because there's no fluid in here, it's not sealed. I went ahead and marked out left and right side bolts and then stacked them accordingly how I took them off. Uh, it's probably unnecessary, but I'm gonna put them back on. If you've clicked on this video, you probably already know what the differential is, does, and why we're doing this. But uh, just as a quick refresher, it is to help pump blinker fluid into the car. And so it's critical you have that. So that's why we got it. So now we just gotta put it in the car uh, and we'll get a lot more traction to our blinker fluid. Just joking. Um, I don't like the viscous differential in, in the car that I have. Uh, I live in a high heat environment and it turns into an open diff, uh, which I have felt it lose traction uh, and that's no fun. But we have a new pumpkin sprayed, geared how I want it, how I wanted it to be geared and uh, unused. Also, no bushings to pound out in the front. I have new Z1 urethane bushings, so the only one I gotta deal with is on the back end of this mounting bolt here, where this guy goes into uh, the mount point where the subframe bushing is. That I have to pop out, so that's gonna be a motherfucker. But the collars look good, the races inside look like they're brand new. Uh, brand new Z1 diff. Can't wait to get this thing installed and uh, full of fluid and ready to fucking rock and roll. Uh, a fucking surprising amount of toughness to get that thing off. So uh, I had to unfortunately resort to pulling the trigger very lightly and quickly on this uh, <laughs> air impact gun uh, because the fucking battery powered one, which is strong as fuck, still didn't have enough juice and these weren't even Loctited. So it's gonna be an adventure. So um, the next thing we gotta do is revisit our uh, fill plug and go install it on this high cap diff cover over here that I have kind of buried behind the car on one of those benches. So we're just getting started actually so far, honestly, so good. Okay, so if you're wondering, I, I kind of got ahead of myself. If you're wondering, uh, this is the Z1 diff cover. Uh, it's supposed to be these fins provide some cooling when the air goes through these and it helps like a heat sink on uh, your computer's processor or uh, graphics card, right? Um, <clears throat> I went out and bought some ultra gray gasket maker uh, high torque silicon RTV from Permatex. They provide a hardware kit. The missing piece here is that filler neck. I keep calling it a filler neck. It's a breather hose, I'm sorry this little breather tube. So I've put it in the freezer. Um, the thought being that I can shrink the molecules ever so slightly and it'll be a little more slippery to get in there. And then as, uh, as it expands, you know, metallurgy and shit, it'll kind of lock itself in. Sheesh. Okay. Quick update. So I had to put the diff cover on hand tight. There's no sealant on this because I needed leverage and I don't have a vise to install this breather tube extension fitting thingy um this is a nightmare so i have my cup of ice there i had it sitting in a cup of ice also in the freezer behind me for quite a while it was like super frosty to the touch to pull it out i tried i don't know a hundred times to get that in there uh, i didn't want to just beat the living shit out of the top with a punch because i don't want to like fuck up the casting or or the breather tube itself. But I did actually put recessions in with a hole punch on all four sides. And of course, the tube kept migrating that way and it's supposed to be pointed this way. So, quick tip, if you have an old piece of shit offset bo box wrench, um, I'm using my old Pittsburgh whatever eight piece that I have over there, you can actually get this around where it sits on that collar, kind of. I think I'm using a, a 10, yeah. Anyway, if you can get that seated, you can actually smack the back end of this wrench to kind of set it on all four sides. Uh, and it does a pretty decent job. Um, I was resorting to like finding an old socket and cutting a groove in it so I could actually slip it around that and beat the shit out of a, a long neck socket, but you don't need to. Um, just get it started with like an old box wrench. Once it bites on into the casting just a tiny little bit, 
Go ahead and stick a punch in there and just whack it a few good times with a hammer. Uh, be careful not to crush your fingers. Also, I was dead wrong on this uh, provided bung. I 100% would have put it in the bottom hole and used this as the filler hole, incorrect. Um, I think that would have overfilled it. So I, I verified with the directions. The provided bung goes in here. And oddly, this one is a kind of a cork ball size. Um, I was using 3 8 and to get the drain plugs out, I was using a 10. This guy is not, it's, a, I wanna say it's a 5 8 Now, of course, the there it is. Uh, what do we have here? 5 to 5 8 5 16 so it is a different size, which is kind of interesting. Um, I'm gonna try and get around here. So 5 16 is the magic, the magic number to get that, that, uh, that return bung installed. I was right uh, in that you can install uh, AN fittings and get a diff cooler kit installed in this aftermarket cover. But uh, if you're not gonna leverage that, put the bung in the top slot this is actually the fill and that is the of course drain so all i gotta do is put some sealant on here uh hand tight those bolts back in and let it sit for probably a couple maybe hour hour and a half and then come down and tighten it to 32 foot pounds with a torque wrench if you're curious about the bung and the plugs those are 25 foot pounds uh right here right here and down below all of these are going to be 32 on the bolts. So just remember 5 16 is the magic um, key. All right, so we've got some RTV sealant around the case. I use some ear uh, cleaners, thingies, Q-tips, that's it, to clean out the insides of the holes, make sure I didn't get any on there. I don't know if that's enough. Uh, so I might put a little bit extra on the thin pieces, but, um, and I can't film this. There's our breather tube, went in nicely, the 100th try. And then I'm gonna try and set it on here and hand tight everything, but I can't, um, I can't film and do this together, unfortunately, uh, cause it's just me and my tripod is gonna fall off my wire rack. So what I'm gonna do is put this on there, tighten it down and we'll go over some thoughts in just a minute. All right, diff covers installed. Is this the hardest thing I've ever done? No. Um, is it a royal pain in the dick? Yes, it is. Let me just tell you guys, doing a differential cover by yourself in the garage with hand tools and a, a workbench that's buried right now that probably wouldn't support the weight of this, we've gone ahead and strapped the differential to here. I need to leave it alone so it will set right where I have it. I, I can't stand it on end because it's, it's lopsided in weight. It'll fall over and then fuck everything up. So we RTV'd and then hand tighten the bolts. Let me just tell you guys, uh, this is a pain in the ass. It's a big pain in the ass. Um, it's not just a great time. It's fun for the whole family, you know? Um, so we're done with the assembly piece. Um, so quick recap, we had to install this dry so that I had a stable enough point to hammer this fucking breather fitting in and it seated all the way through. It looks good on the other side. I cleaned all the particulate out of the inside of the casting. I installed this by hand with some red Loctite 271 and then uh, gave it a, like an eighth to a quarter of a turn with some just some vice grips just to grab onto this collar and yeah. Uh, I laid out little dots where all the bolts were that I pulled off of the OG casting. I was wrong on the Z1 supplied bung. Uh, so I did put a washer on there. I tightened it down 25 foot pounds as it stated. Uh, the one thing I did do though, is I put just ever so slightly, I put just a, a few dots of anti-seize, aluminum anti-seize also from Permatex around those threads. I figured, you know what? It's never been installed, uh, the metal on metal threads. Uh, if you do fuck it up or it's uneven, you could gouge, you could break you know, one of the threads or something. 
Uh, first time mating, who knows if I'll ever remove it and do a diff cooler. I don't foresee that happening, but you never fucking know. And if it's good enough for my spark plugs, eh, it's good enough for my fucking return plug on my uh, differential. So we have successfully assembled the Z1 high capacity differential cover to a brand new Z1 diff.